Now, what was the other one we had the other day? The Vampire. Clementine? No. Yeah, Clementine. Clementine was the bomb, too. We haven't had one beer yet that's... that's We're waiting for beer. Vampire Slayer, but somebody didn't bring it back from their house. Oh, it wasn't me. Not not, not it. Anyway, so let's... Now that we've had enough Brown Angel... We're going, we're going local. We go? Local? Oh, man, we didn't... Where's the yeah, Vienna Lager? Vienna Lager? We yeah. got that somewhere else. Okay, well, we, we've got two locals, Virginia viewers. Uh, there's a Vienna Lager and from Devil's Backbone and Eight Point IPA. Mm -hmm. uh, just about an hour or two south of uh, where we are here in, Lee, in Virginia. They're in Roseland, Virginia. Okay. In the middle of nowhere. Lexington on the Lexington? bottle. But Both those okay. places are the middle of nowhere. Yeah, if you know VMI, Virginia Military Institute, but I don't think they're in town. This is like 5.9% alcohol by volume. Uh, as far as an IPA, IPA, it's definitely not an East Coast IPA. It's not a balanced uh, IPA, but it wasn't overly hoppy. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I didn't sneeze. You know, usually have a sneeze factor, and the, those West Coast ones really give yeah. you one or two. Didn't hit you all with that piney Not stuff. Not at all. I, I there was like I think you had mentioned it's more of a floral. Uh, yeah, IPA. that floral and grapefruit mess going yeah. on. And the difference is like the usually the East Coast and like Midwest they they put a little more malt in it, but this was more grapefruit and hop forward. But I I could session the hell out of that yeah. beer. Yeah, it was good. Now. Unfortunately, we don't have the Vienna Lager, which is a dark lager. Um, All grain lager from from uh, Devil's Backbone. I, I I'd say I bought that once. I bought it for the party for many others to try. Um, decent beer for as far as the lager. I, I really enjoyed that one. Session beer for me. Yeah, yeah. Devil's Backbone is putting out some good stuff, and they have a new beer coming out, which is a black lager. It's a combination. It's a Black IPA, which is a real popular style between themselves and Heavy Seas, so you know we'll be reviewing Ball that. Balmorons! Balmorhorn. Balmor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next up is one of Johnny Boy's favorites. Fuller's 1845, extremely award-winning bottle condition for the fresh flavor of real ale. Definitely, real ale. definitely have to say... I bought it once, had to give DJ a shot at this, and look! I'm glad he did. Best before June 21st, 2013. Imagine that. They put a date on it that's clear. Yeah. That you can read, idiots. 6.3% alcohol by volume. Very good. Uh, nice, smooth beer. Um, no real carbonation mess going on with your mouth. Uh, definitely something I would obviously buy again. I really enjoyed that. High rating on Beer Advocate. Yeah, he had plenty of, he had just enough hop, bittering hops in there to, to make it not cloyingly sweet. You had a lot of caramel malt in that one, and you had some bitterness in the background that came from the malt itself. It's a real balanced, like, English bitter type beer, and that's a, that's a pretty decent session beer, though it is a little bit higher alcohol. I mean, that very, very nice beer. 6.3, so it's not too crazy. I mean, heck, you know, nowadays, 14 percenters aren't uncommon. But, you know, back in the day, 6.3 was a big-ass beer. In 1845. Yeah, yeah, in 1845, yeah. Or it, back in our college days, we were pretty old. But anyways, so... I'm still in my, my... I give that one an A, no doubt. Yeah. Clown Shoes, we give it an A, and what was this one here? I would say probably a B minus. Yeah, B minus. It's a good attempt for a brand yeah. a pretty new brewery. Hell, they haven't been around much more than a Duh. couple of years. Oh, go for it, guys. Drink up. So, last one in the rack, we've got... Omi Gang. Omi Gang. Omi Gang. Rare, Rare Boss. The true Belgian style amber ale. I had this a couple times and uh, definitely had to get DJ here to try this one. This was one of our good brews tonight. Mm -hmm. Take it away. Oh, my turn. Okay. <laughs> or six point, okay, 6.5% alcohol. How about John that? has done his job. 6.5% yeah. read, read the label. Read the label. To me, it's you know it's that Belgian take, that saisony sort of, a little bit sour, not cloyingly sweet. That you've got a bit of kick of IPA with the hops in there, sort of 
amber ale and they have enough malt in the background that it balances all of that out. If that's intelligible, I'm not sure. But it's a Belgian take on amber ale for sure. And you know they're 3,264 miles from Brussels. That's because they're in New York? Yeah. So yes, it's not coming from there, but they are owned by Duval. So that's about as Brussels as you get, right guys, Duval? And we've all had that and liked it. Have you had Duval? Yes, I have. Yes, so he's had Duval, so we've all had it and liked it. But really smooth, easy drinking beer, sessionable beer. And you know what? Speaking of sessionable beers, we got something special for you tonight, guys. We got a... Uh, Let me give that one, by the way, before we go. Oh, I, I definitely... I, for me, I give a name, I just, just, you know, yeah. for it's an American, Belgian style. Uh, definitely can't compete with the, you know, the yeast strains over in Belgium, but for being an American style, I definitely give it give it an A minus. I, yeah. I, I, this is the second or third one I've bought. I like trying the singles first and uh, you know, I go back and buy another single just to try it again. I yeah. really like it. I agree. A minus, B plus, that kind of range. You know what? If you like it, you like it. And remember, give us your, your opinion, guys, because we, you know, we want to hear what you say. We'll give you the feedback. Yeah, you know, if you like Natty Bo, <laughs> you know, tell us. And we got the Natty Bo feedback. Why don't you like Natty Bo? It's a really good beer. Well, yeah. guess what, guys? Just for you, National Premium is back again. Did you know that, Joe? No, I did not. Yes, they brought that that unique beer back. And I do have to apologize for all the Baltimore Orioles fans that, what did I say Baltimore Orioles? That I said that they suck. Uh, in that one. Um, they're actually doing pretty good. But how, how they do against the Nets? They took two out of three. Uh, yeah. I, I think you'd face Strasburg, mm -hmm. and Strasburg or Gio Gonzalez shut you down. So, you know. Yes. Anyways, without further ado, tonight we've got a special beer. I think this is the third one we've had, at least drank. This evening, anyway. Uh, this comes from, I would say, Callahan Brewing Company. Um, <laughs> But it's not really, he, he wanted to call it a back in brewing black ale. Back in brewing black uh, ale. He had to leave to head back home, but my brother produced a home brew and we were going to try it. He said it was a black ale. It's, it's, it's a black IPA that's yeah, real see. heavy on the dark fruits and cherries. It's, it's a unique brew. So we got our first home brew review for you for our Crescendo beer for the evening. He's been brewing since, ooh, back in the 90s. Uh, yeah, during that first when I, when, I was, when I was drinking Rolling Rocks up at West Virginia University and Milwaukee's yeah. Beast and And I was drinking like Bush Light and... He's got a nice oh, head, oh. Nice, nice stout, uh, but nice head there, probably float, probably float the... Yeah. Yep. Typical like home brew, bottle condition. Yeah. We got a solid three finger head on it, which is you know you expect that out of a home brew. You get a lot better carbonation out of that when you when you factory produce a beer. The carbonation dissimilates on the beer across the bottle, so you get a little bit less head. But this, you get real tight bubbles. And man, look at that beer. Yeah. You're not. This is a black IPA that's black as pitch. You're not seeing any red through this. No light at all. And Man, it's solid, really tight bubble heads, but that's typical of bottle conditioning. Mm -hmm. so let's do, you, do you remember what he used, put in it? No, you I know, it's my brother. I was freaking cooking and doing all this other I crap this time. attention to him. I wanted to pour the beer. <laughs> okay. Well, he said that? he used some hops and it was good. There you Something go. like that. But let's see what goes. We got on this. You can't smell it, can you? No, but I got bubbles on my nose. <laughs> let's see. There's a, this is real up front with the floral hops. I think he, what I'm, what I'm remembering, he put Cascade and also Warrior hops in this one. So we got a lot of floral and a lot of grapefruit up front. There's toffee and a lot of dark fruits in this beer. Real solid smelling beer. Let's see what we got on the taste. I, I got a beer taste, like a stout. I'd say excellent. I mean, for a home brew, I, I definitely have to say excellent. The balance in this beer comes with the fruits. There's there's a lot of grapefruit forward hops in it, and but there's this like dark cherry and sort of raisin thing going on in here that balances it off. And there's enough sweet malt that's bitter sweet malt 
that gives it a dry finish and brings you back for a little bit more. I don't feel the carbonation at all in it, and I believe he said this was a 6% beer, 5.8 to 6%. You know, home brews aren't really an exact science, always on the measuring on the alcohol, but he, by the gravity he measured on it, we're about a 6%er. Is he your brother or my brother? No, you were cooking. I just, okay. I just geeked out on the beer because I'm a beer nerd, so, you know, what am I going to do? <laughs> Maybe he'll be my brother now because I'm more of a beer geek. He won't want John anymore. Not anymore. Well, with that, it was Sam, a, good. It was the 15th anniversary Epic Beer Night. Not for the two of us. Oh, the bromance. The bromance. <laughs> but um, you know, probably I wouldn't be surprised next time you see us. Is John's been married a really long time. Yeah. Yeah. I. Yeah, we've been married a long time. Oh, a long, long time. The next time you probably see us, maybe kind of, uh, are we going to do from after the Northern Virginia Brew Fest? We're going to be at the Brew Fest. Well, we're going to be at the Brew Fest. But we're going to film at the Brew Fest. Crawl. Are we going to? Okay. We're going to be at the Brew Fest, guys. We're going to do the Northern Virginia Brew Fest. There's going to be over 50 breweries there, so you know what that means. Trouble. Beer. Beer and trouble. Not and guess what? The wife's not going to be here for <laughs> either of us. No. We're leaving them home. Well, and we're gonna, we have we're sending one out of the country. Sending one out of the country, and we even got a crash pad. Yes, we do it within walking distance. Within walking distance. Jay and Faith, we love you. <laughs> exactly. So, we will see you next DJ's Brew Tube, guys. I give this one for a home brew. I give this a solid A minus. Yep. Solid A minus. Um, there's no bottle dating on it, so he's not going to get the end. I'm going to get a pit. I'm going to tell him about that one. We're going to have to get up on him on that, but really, as beers go. It was free. It was free. It was free. And so, yeah, it was good. It was good. But no, really solid beer. Um, I mean, hell, look at that glass lacing, guys. For a homebrew, that's pretty impressive. So, until the next DJ's Brew Tube, remember, as always, think globally, drink locally, support drink your craft brew. Drink locally. You said locally. What's locally? That, that's, <laughs> that's drunk ease for locally, don't you know? Damn. Get with the lingo, baby. Mm. I can say I did drink some beers. Anyways, Adios. Think, think locally, drink locally, and support your local craft beer movement. Peace out. Adios.